The Core TT2 looks like it's a tabletop version of the Yugo 2 portable DAC. It's of higher quality though, and despite it's already on the market for some time, I got frequent requests to do a review without and with the M scaler. I've reviewed the Cord M scaler before in combination with the MyTech Brooklyn, the Denafrips Ares 2 and later on with Cord's flagship DAC, the Dave, as it plays now in my reference setup 1A. The Yugo TT2 is one step down from the Dave and it's a big step in price. The portable Yugo, which I haven't reviewed, is again half the price of the Yugo TT2. The same audio tech you find in the Yugo, but no portability, can be found in the Q-Test. And that's a bit confusing, for you would have thought that the Yugo TT Tabletop 2 is the non-portable version of the Yugo 2. The ultra portable Mojo 2 has just been introduced and is less than half the price of the Q-Test. Since all core decks are based on the Watts Transient Aligned Filtering programs in the FPGA, Cord loves to use the filter length as a quality indicator. The longer the filter, the better the resolution in time. Let's give you an overview. The Mojo 2 costs 599, has 40,960 taps and is portable. The Qtest costs 1,720 euros, has 49,152 taps and is the stationary version of the Yugo 2. The Yugo 2 costs 2,400 euros, also has 49,152 taps and is portable. The Yugo TT2 on review here costs 5,670 euros, has 98,304 taps and is a stationary model. And the Dave costs 11,820 euros, has 164,000 taps and is the tabletop flagship. The Yugo M scaler costs 5,150 euros. It is no DAC of course, but the filtering has 1,015,808 taps and has the same physical dimensions as the Yugo TT2. The number of taps is only used by Quartz robots as a quality indicator. Within the court realm, it does give a good indication of the filter quality. There are, of course, other parameters that define the sound quality, like the digital input circuits and the analog output circuits. But let's start with the Yugo TT2 and see where it is to be used. You need a stereo with an amplifier and a set of loudspeakers. The analog outputs of the Yugo TT2 are connected to this amp using either RCA or XLR cables. You can then use a computer or a laptop to send music to the Yugo TT2 over either USB, SPDIF or TOSLINK, depending on the outputs the computer has. On the computer you should use BitPerfect audio player software like JRiver or Divana or Rune. To up the quality further, you could use a network player or network bridge that plays music from your computer over the network. Network players might have their own player software integrated or need music server software running on the computer. Network bridges need software on the computer like the ones I just mentioned. You can also use the quality streaming services Cobus and Tidal with network players and network bridges. Usually a smartphone or tablet is used to select the music. If you still want to use a CD player, nothing wrong with that, you can upgrade the sound quality by connecting its digital output to the Yugo TT2. You can also connect the Toslink output of your TV to the Yugo TT2 and so improve the sound quality of your TV sound. The same goes for other digital sources like game consoles or portable players. Let's take a closer look at the Yugo TT2 itself. Like all cord DACs, the Yugo TT2's housing is machined from a slab of aluminium, making it extremely rigid. Both silver and black versions are available. It measures 235 by 238 by 52 mm and weighs 2.5 kilos. 
On the front left we see a small screen that indicates the input choice, sampling frequency and other settings. These settings are done with the menu selection button and the menu set button. The third button has a power icon but in fact switches in and out of standby. The centrally placed illuminated large ball is the volume control. If the volume control is active, the color of the lightning indicates the setting. Red is minimum, violet maximum. To the right the 3.5 mm headphone jack and two 6.35 mm headphone jacks. The top holds the obligatory cord porthole that gives a peak on the circuit board and the lightning indicates the sampling frequency. The plastic cover on the left hides the Bluetooth antenna. On the rear we find the USB B input that does USB audio class 2 up to 768 kHz 32 bits driverless on all computers save Windows that is limited to 384 unless you download a special driver from the Cord website. USB also accepts DSD up to DSD 512. Next to it two Toslink inputs and two SPDIF inputs on BSC. Toslink accepts sampling rates up to 192 kHz 24 bit and SPDIF goes up to 384 kHz 24 bits. The two SPDIF inputs can work together and then accept up to 768 kHz 24 bits. This is used for connecting the Yugo M scaler. Two RCA's offer asymmetrical analog out with in between them the balanced analog outputs on XLRs. To the left two BNC's for connecting a future product. The supplied switch mode power supply is connected to the power input on the left. The entire DAC is on one large circuit board. The incoming 15 volt DC are filtered and regulated here to load 6 supercapacitors that in turn feed the DAC. It is a way to decouple the power brick from the DAC electronics, while the supercapacitors are capable of delivering large currents instantly. On the front we see a spherical volume control. Centrally placed the Silink Atrix 7 FPGA with behind it the analog output circuit that looks like a mini me version of a power amp, which of course it kind of is, for it can deliver enough power to drive 800 ohms headphones according to cord. To the left the earlier mentioned Bluetooth antenna. You can select all settings using the menu and set button on the front. Simply press the menu button repeatedly until you see the required sub menu and then press the set button repeatedly until you see the required option. You will only need to set some options here on installation since you will use the infrared remote control for input selection, filter selection and volume. The first thing you set is the gain. Cord DACs have a higher output voltage than standard and some amps might get overloaded. It is therefore good practice to set the low gain or use the fixed output called DAC, which is 2.5 volts, 0.5 volts above the Redbook specs. I use the variable output mode called amplification and turn down the volume to minus 10 dB. I do the same with the Dave. This setting of course depends on the amplifier use. There are those that are afraid to use a digital volume control for it would reduce resolution. That was the case with the old 16 bit converters, but especially with FPGA converters it is no problem at all. As with their other DACs, Cord uses colors to indicate a sampling rate. On the Yugo TT2 the porthole shows the color while the display shortly reports the sampling rate numerically. As soon as you plug in a pair of headphones, the Yugo TT2 will switch over to headphone mode and mute the line outputs. Headphones with impedances between 16 to 800 ohms can be used without the need of an additional amp. As you might know by now, I don't care for headphone listening. I am claustrophonic, I don't like to be locked in a confined acoustical space isolated from the outside world. So I have too little headphone listening experience to judge the headphone outputs. 
To do the listening evaluation, I used my reference setup 1A. That uses the Air AX520 amplifier to power the AudioPhysics Scorpio loudspeakers over AudioQuest Robinhood Zero cables. The Yugo TT2 was connected to the amp over Grim SQM balanced interlinks. It received digital audio over a network acoustics USB A to B cable from the Aurelic Aries G2 network player. That was connected to the network over the Eno system Ethernet filter to the SOTM SNH 10G network switch. The Entel NUC 10i7 with 8TB SSD and running Rune was on the third floor was mainly connected to the SOTM switch over fiber optics. See my reference setups November 2020. Playback was controlled by an iPad Pro. It might be clear that the sound character, although not entirely the same, is familiar to me, being a Cord Dave owner. Of course it can't deliver the same level of sound quality, but the WTA filter does offer rather high time resolution and low time smearing, great texture in the lows, proper spatial projection with ditto focusing and a deep black background. All within his class of course. I have a preference for the Yugo TT2 over the Denoflips Venus 2, my other favourite in this class. Quality wise they are about equal but they do have different characters. Where the Yugo TT2 is analytical, there the Venus is slightly more engaging. Don't expect drastic differences unless your amp and or your loudspeakers are less balanced. Don't buy a cord if your amp and or speakers have a tendency to harshness and don't buy the Denoflips if your amp and or loudspeakers tend to be the opposite. And of course personal taste is the factor too. In an attempt to reduce the personal taste factor, Cord has added four filter settings. A setting that offers the highly detailed sound called incisive neutral, a setting named warm and for both of them a version with a roll off to prevent HF noise to make some amplifiers unstable. The differences are rather small though. Physically the Yugo M scaler is a better fit for the Yugo TT2 than for my Dave. They have exactly the same dimensions and the Yugo TT2 can be used on top of the M scaler. The Yugo setup is identical but the M scaler is connected between the Aurelic Aries 2 and the Yugo TT2. From the Aries 2 to the M scaler the USB cable is used while between the M scaler and the Yugo TT2 I used two network acoustic BNC cables. Watch my review of the M scaler for more information. The result is an increased spatial projection, a further opening of the stereo image, more focusing, more textures in the lows and a cleaner sibilance. Overall it places the DAC plus scaler in a class close to the Dave solo. It's really special to hear what the M scaler achieves. Cord DACs are rather popular, also with me. Ever since I heard the 600 Euro Cord Cordet Gem in 2008, I was fascinated by its ability to produce transients in a better way. I immediately reviewed the 3800 Euro QDB76 and bought it right away. Today the Yugo TT2 is so much better, so much closer to the truth and all that in 12 years. Cord isn't the only company progressing FPGA technology, but they have been the first and are still on it. With fantastic products I must say. Please use it with a worthy digital source for that is needed to obtain the full potential. Which brings me to the end of this program. I'll be back though next Friday at 5 pm Central European time. If you don't want to miss that, subscribe to this channel or follow me on the social media so you will be informed when new videos are out. Help me reach even more people by giving this video a thumb up or link to the video on the social media. It is much appreciated. Many thanks to those viewers that support this channel financially. It keeps me independent and lets me improve the channel further. If that makes you feel like supporting my work too, the links are in the comments below this video on YouTube. 
I'm Hans Beekhuizen. Thank you for watching and see you in the next show or on the HPproject.com. And whatever you do, enjoy the music.